Hi there, my name is Amanda and I'm the blogger and tpt -er behind the Primary Gal. Today I would like to show you how I run my virtual small groups. So I'm going to half pretend like you're in my small group and half of the time talk to you like a teacher and tell you kind of the who, what, when, where, what you need to do. So first I'll do a little teacher talk. So some helpful tips that I think are good or if you can implement it would be wonderful. And the first is to, if possible, send home a real printed copy of the book. I know in some districts that is not allowed, that's not possible, or maybe you can for a while, but you may not be able to maintain that for weeks and weeks. But if possible, send home a printed copy. If not, then your students will need a piece of paper and a pencil so that they can write down the problems from your screen and then work them out with you. For me, I hate having my kids write down the problems. I do think it's a good practice for them to do, so it's not awful if they don't have a printed copy, but sometimes just for the sake of time, if it's already written down in their book, all they have to do is actually focus on solving the math problems. There's also a website, which I'll show you here in just a minute. Just a minute. It is called camiapp.com. It is free for teachers. Um, there are some paid options where it can do more and you have more functions, but I'm just using the free version and what I'm going to show you today. It's what I've been using with my students and it works just fine. So I do think our district is working out a, to, to purchase that, but I don't even know what features that would have. Um, but I do know that, that a lot of teachers have been talking about using Cami. So maybe paid versions are very common. I don't know. So I always start out my, my small groups by greeting them. Hey guys, how are you? A little bit of talk. Today we're going to work on two digit by two digit addition or two digit by two digit subtraction or kind of giving them an idea of what we're going to work on. And then I tell them, okay guys, let me share my screen. And I do a little clicking to share my screen. You'll see here that some of these are still in the works. I hope by the time you see this video and you download this for yourself that more of these weeks have been added. I promise they're in the works, but they take time. You'll click on the week that you need. So if you're further along and you're on week three or four and you find yourself in a digital situation, click week three or four. For me and the purpose of this video, I have already clicked on week one and I'm going to show you what it looks like. It opens up in Google, uh, in Google Drive. Let me plug in my laptop here. That's real life virtual learning too, guys. So it will open up in Google Drive and you can do a couple of things. You can download it, which is what I like to do. I don't know why my Google Drive is not organized or you can organize it and then it will stay in your Google Drive. For me, I'm a download it and re-upload it kind of girl. Doesn't matter what you prefer. Then I'm going to go to camiapp.com and you will find a page that looks just like this. Here you can open it from Google Drive. So that is for those people who are nice and organized and they know where it's at in their Google Drive. They save a lot there. But for me, I just click open from computer and then I upload the file. Either way, then you will open up to a screen that looks like this. And usually by default for me, it's at 100%, which means that bottom part is cut off and that just drives my little mind crazy. So if you click automatic, it will just automatically adjust it to fit your screen there. Then I would tell my kids, okay, especially with my book, we work on training. I train my kids to know day one, day two, day three. So I might tell my kids here, Okay, make sure you're opened up to day two or day three or okay, it's day one. And then scroll to the next page where they will have the exact same problems that are in their booklet. If your kids don't have a booklet, that's fine. So what I do is I use the drawing tool and it is usually set on a one. I like it to be a little bit bolder. I that's personal preference. Whatever you prefer is fine. You can choose a color or maybe just black, whatever you want um, to actually work out the problems. So now I'm going to switch over to your student mode and you are working on this at home. I'm also going to pretend like you are a student who does not have a book. Okay. So 
All right, kids, I need for you on your piece of paper to write down the problem 52 plus 20, okay? Make sure that you write it nice and neat. I'm going to say the numbers really slowly. 5, 2, and then underneath it, you're going to need a plus sign and 2, 0. Make sure your numbers are lined up. Remember, we can turn our paper sideways, too, if you're struggling to line your numbers up. 52 plus 20. And then hold it up to the screen so that I can see it and I know. Great job. Great job. You guys have 52 plus 20. Now, because it's early in the school year, let's work this out together. So first, I would like for you guys to watch and then I'll give you a minute to write down your problem. So first, we always start in the ones column, what is on the right hand side. And sometimes guys, this is hard for us because we don't read this way. We read starting over here. But in math, when we are adding or subtracting, we start over here. So let's start with two plus zero. So I'm going to put my finger on two on my hundreds chart and usually I would have to count but since this is zero I just keep my finger right on two so two plus zero equals two and we're gonna do a lot of problems like this this year guys and we love those twos because they make it so much easier all right now let's do five plus two after we do our ones, we move over here to the tens where we have five plus two. So I'm going to put my finger on five and count up two. One, two. Oh, five plus two equals seven. So my answer is 72. I'll give you just a minute to get caught up. Make sure you have 72 written down. All right, let's move to our next, our next problem. Number two says 36 plus 22. I'm gonna give you a minute to solve this problem on your own. Now, teachers, in real life, I would not give one problem and then come right back to problem number two and make them do it on their own. But just know you can make it as guided or as, okay, do it and come back to me as you want. Remember, you can change the color, the size, whatever you might need to do. I like to use my hundreds chart by putting a dot and then one, two, three, or whatever it is. Um, but maybe there's a way that works better for you. Either way, it's here because I really think it's important for our kids using this intervention to, if they're at an intervention level, they probably need some tools to help them. Even a lot of my kids, they might be able to find 14 or say 14, but they don't know how to write 14. So a hundred chart is a really valuable tool to help them kind of be able to stay up with you. So if you have any questions about using this virtually, let me know. But I hope it helps you at least get started and be able to do something with your small groups virtually. Have a great day, guys.